Let's take a look at a few more tools that help us create geometric shapes. But I want to say something here. There really is nothing that we have done up to this point that could not have been drawn just as good, might have taken more time, with the humble pen tool. In 1988, when Adobe Illustrator was released from Aldis, that's about all we had, to be honest with you. But it doesn't really make sense in terms of efficiency to draw something with the pen tool, like say a rectangle, when you have a very easy way to do it with a button. With that said, once shapes are drawn, they can be modified using other tools. Navigate down right here and click and hold on that button. And you're going to see a couple more tools. Line segment, arc, spiral, rectangle, and polar grids. Let's tear that off. Click the big button right here. That'll give us easier access to them. Let's start with the line segment tool. Kind of predictable. Come over here and click and drag. You're drawing a line segment. If I hold down the shift key, I will draw at 90 or 45 degrees. If I hold the Alt key down, I draw out from center, and of course you could combine the Shift key with that to keep it at a 90 or a 45. We'll have a little bit of fun with this tool later, the Line Segment tool. I'm going to do Control A, Delete. The next one, the infamous Arcing tool. Select it and draw. And of course you're drawing an arc. Don't really like the arc that you see there. What we're going to do is come over here and click our mouse without moving to get into the Arc Segment tool options. We can change the X and Y length, we can open or close the shape. Now if you close it, it will draw a straight line right along here. We can add the base along the X or Y, we can change from concave to convex, and we can fill it with a color if we so choose. We click OK, we've made another arc. I've mentioned this before, I'll mention it again. I'm a visual person, I'm an artist. A lot of times it's not about a number, it's about what I see. So me going back and changing to concave or convex by a number is I don't really see it as much as if I'm really drawing it. So shortcut keys. I'm drawing an arc. Don't like it. Leave it live. Don't let go of the mouse and press the up and down arrow keys to change it. Up and down arrow keys will change the arc concave convex. Let's stop there. As I mentioned before, shapes can be controlled once you release the mouse. You don't like the arc tool, what it's doing in terms of the concave or convex. You want to do something that the tool can't do. Come over here and pick up your direct selection tool. Again, that's the first one of the two under the white tool here. Come over to this shape and click right on the anchor point at the end. It only has two, one here and one there. You'll see direction lines coming off of the anchor point. If you grab that direction point right there and pull it, you can literally change this into anything you want it to be. So once the shape is drawn, you can then go in with the direct selection tool and modify it. Let's go ahead and press Control A, delete. Next, the amazing spiral. Come over here and click and you're drawing a spiral. Click on the screen without moving. The radius, decay is how quickly it decays inward. Segments, we have eight, those are between the anchor points. Do you want clockwise or counterclockwise? How about shortcuts? Click and drag. Andy, I don't like the number of segments. I wish I had more, I wish I had less. It's live, you haven't let go of the mouse. Up and down arrow keys. Up key, down key. You know what? I don't like the spiral at all. Hold down the control key. Now before you do that, you're doing this. Watch what happens when I hold the control key down. It's like you're unwinding a spring, but you can create any spiral that you want by holding down the control key. Once you've let go of the mouse, you now have complete control over it using standard tools like direct selection. The spiral tool, control A, delete. The next is a rectangular grid, and we can click and drag. Let me just go to the shortcut keys. Up and down arrow keys increase or decrease the number of rows. Left and right arrow keys the number of columns. Four new keys I'm about to introduce. Press the X or C key while you're holding the mouse down. We're still live. And you skew the grid, left or right. If you press the F or V keys, you skew the grid up and down. Control A, delete. And finally, the polar grid. Click and drag, same keys. 
Up and down arrow keys control the concentric circles. Left and right arrow keys, the number of segments. X and C keys skew the concentric circles. You're traveling down a tunnel. The F and V keys control the skew of the pie segments. Remember, once you let go of the mouse, control can be maintained by using other tools. For example, you could go back to the direct selection tool, come over and actually select this one line right here and get rid of it. Remember, once the shape is drawn and you let go of the mouse, the magic of the shortcut keys stop, but it's the shape as if you drew it with the pen tool. That's all there is here. Let's do one more thing. Control A, delete. I'm going to pick up the line segment tool and draw one line. Do any line, any size, any length, give it an angle, just let go. Something like that. I know that if I pick up my selection tool, I can rotate it, I can resize it, etc., etc. But we actually have a tool that allows us to rotate. Now, why would I want to use that? Well, check this out. Here it is. Click that tool. You will notice if I come over here and click and drag, I'm rotating. I'm rotating it around that small point right there, which is the anchor for rotation. But I don't want it to rotate around that point, so this is what you're going to do. Hold down the Alt key, option on a Mac, same key, different name. You'll see a small hyphen, if you will, appear at the lower right-hand corner of your crosshair cursor. Hold the Alt key down, and I want you to click on this anchor point right there. Alt, click. Two things happen. You have changed the position of the rotation to the end, and number two, it automatically opened up the rotate dialog box. Change the angle to something that can be divisible by 360, like the number 60. Check the preview. You can see what it's doing. What you want to do next is click Copy. By clicking Copy, you've successfully made a copy at 60 degrees. Next step, and don't do anything else, reach over and press Control D. Now what Control D does is it duplicates the last thing you did, and the last thing you did was make a copy at 60 degrees, and the rotation is around the center. Control D, Control D, Control D. Kind of like a very thin snowflake. We could then come back to this, pick up our ellipse tool, get into it right there, get right on center, hold down the Alt key, and drag. Hold the shift key too to keep it as a circle and begin making the spokes of a radial, a pie, whatever you want to call it. Start with basic shapes and then begin modifying them. Line segments, arcs, spirals, and grids. But don't forget, you've got a lot of control with shortcuts to make these tools do what you want them to do.